Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar, Farm to Summer, how regional offices and state agencies support the Farm to Summer program. My name is Erin Heisom. I'm the Farm to Summer Specialist here in the Office of Community Food Systems at USDA headquarters in Alexandria, Virginia. I'm joined today with my colleague Janelle Walker. Janelle will be handling our chat feature, so if you have questions throughout the webinar, please use the chat box in the lower left-hand side, and Janelle will be flagging those questions for you. Uh, just as a reminder, the PowerPoint today will be sent to all participants following the webinar, and if you are having trouble streaming the audio through your computer, dial in using your phone. But let's dive right in, because we have some wonderful speakers today on both the regional and state level, and I would love for you to spend as much time with them as possible. So we're going to briefly go over what is Farm to Summer. Hopefully you are all very familiar with the term, but if not, it'll be a nice little refresher. And then we're going to hear from Katina Kafalis in the Northeast Regional Office, as well as Diana Floyd from the Kansas State Department of Education and Tiffany Voss from the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer uh, Services. At the very end, we'll review some of the resources that are available to you to support your sponsors in their efforts to bring the farm to the summer. And as time allows, we'll finish up with some Q&A. So we always like to start with the data, right, and then knowing what is going on and where it's occurring. We know that incorporating local food items into the Summer Meals Program is a growing initiative. According to the 2015 Farm to School Census, 22% of school districts are buying local foods for their Summer Meals Program. But Farm to Summer is more than just buying local. It really is a natural extension of the Farm to School program. So that incorporates either buying local food for your meals program or serving local foods through taste tests or activities, experiential opportunities for children so that they literally get their hands in the dirt. They're experiencing what it is to uh, eat healthy food, to grow healthy food, and to learn about our food system. This is oftentimes done through school gardens, community gardens, or even education programming occurring at summer sites. More and more we're seeing sponsors select what we call edible sites, edible summer sites. So this means serving summer meals either at a farmer's market or maybe at a school or community garden. So really great way that we're seeing sponsors bring that farm to summer initiative very quite literally to their summer sites. But a lot of this stuff is done at the site level. It's done at the sponsor level. And we recognize at the USDA that we want to support our regional offices and our state agencies in their efforts to support summer sponsors. So the focus of today's webinar is going to be showing exactly how the different levels of USDA at the region and at the state level are able to support their sponsors in this effort. So here are our wonderful speakers. First up is Katina Kefalis. Katina is a program specialist at the USDA Food and Nutrition Service Northeast Regional Office, where she works on the Child and Adult Care Food Program and the Summer Food Service Program. She holds a Master's in Food Policy and Applied Nutrition from Tufts University and a Bachelor's in Health Science from San Francisco State University. Her main interests include increasing access to fresh, nutritious foods and providing nutrition education two participants of the CACFP and SFP program. Prior to her work at the USDA, Katina served as a program reviewer for CACFP, SFSP, and the National School Lunch Program at the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Next, we'll hear from Diana Floyd. Diana is a child nutrition consultant at the Kansas State Department of Education. The Department of Child Nutrition and Wellness provides oversight, training, and guidance to CACFP sponsors to enhance their programs. As a registered dietitian, Diana provides technical assistance on special diets, nutrition, and nutrition education to sponsors and fellow consultants while focusing on providing user-friendly tools to understand and implement CACFP requirements and farm-to-plate initiatives. Her rural background provides a unique perspective to local foods. Last and definitely not least, we have Tiffany Voss the Outreach Director for Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services in the Division of Food, Nutrition, and Wellness. With more than 10 years of experience in public relations, marketing, and sales, Tiffany Voss has done it all. Currently, Tiffany serves as the Outreach Director for the Division of Food, Nutrition, and Wellness at the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and oversees the creative team 
that helps promote the National School Lunch Program and the state's other child nutrition programs. We are very excited to hear from all these wonderful sponsors today, so I'm going to let Katina kick it off. Great. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to speak today regarding the integration of Farm to Summer and the Summer Meals Program in the Northeast region. My name is Katina Kapalis, and I work out of USDA FNS Regional Office in Boston, and one of my roles is as point of contact for anything Farm to Summer in our region. Here in the Northeast Regional Office, we work with seven states, including New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. And I'm particularly excited to think and talk about summer today as we are in the middle of a major snowstorm right now in Boston. So it's really nice to think uh, and talk about warm, sunny days ahead. A little over two years ago, when FNS expanded its farm to school work to include farm to summer and farm to preschool, we as a regional office started to think about how we could support and expand this work with our state sponsors and partners in our region. Our first goal was to, to really embed farm to summer into everyday activity, everyday work, not only within our office, but also with routine interactions with our states and our communities. Everyone is very busy, and we didn't want to think of this as sort of an extra project per se, but rather wanted to create Farm to Summer as part of the norm, part of the culture of the Summer Meals Program in the Northeast. We see Farm to Summer as a strategy for increasing participation and enhancing operations of the Summer Meals Program by serving local foods and pairing those foods with educational activities about food and nutrition, it's really a great way to increase meal quality and get children engaged in summer programming. It's one of those mini tricks in the toolkit for increasing participation of summer meals, and ultimately that is really the goal of all of us here today. In the Northeast, because of our dramatic season, many harvests are at their peak during summer months, making local foods really affordable, accessible, and readily available. So serving local foods in the summer meals, reimbursable meals, made a lot of sense to us. We also have very innovative state agency partners and sponsors, always looking for ways to attract children to summer meal sites. And but what better way than serving high quality fresh meals and offering food and nutrition um, activities. Thus, um, lastly, we, we have a very active farm to school programming in this region, so there was great opportunity for school food authorities participating in the summer meals program to continue aspects of farm to school into the summer months. Thus, we saw really tremendous opportunities, room for growth, and a really growing interest among our state sponsors and partners rega um, regarding farm to summer in our region. So we embarked on the goal of integrating Farm to Summer into everything Summer Meals, both internally within our regional office and externally with all communications and interactions with the Summer Meals community. I really call this our, our digging in period. I can say that Farm to Summer is now a part of normal conversations, plans, reporting, anything, anything Summer Meals related in the Northeast region. I have, I've had tremendous support from uh, my colleagues in our states, and though we've made great strides, we still have lots more work to be done. I look forward to later presentations in this webinar to also get some new and, and really fresh ideas. By embedding Farm to Summer into everything Summer Meals in our region, we had hoped that this would result in our state agencies doing the same. These are a few examples of ways we have encouraged state agencies to increase their support um, for Farm to Summer. One of the biggest things we did was utilize our annual regional fall debrief to discuss and talk about Farm to Summer. Our annual debriefs bring state agencies and partners into one room to discuss the successes of the previous summer and begin planning for the following year. So by embedding Farm to Summer into various points throughout the meeting, it allowed it to become institutionalized and again, part of the norm of summer meals. We would take time to share new resources, highlight model state agency and partner activities, and share successes as well as work through any challenges. This year, we had a local partner from Vermont who did Farm to Summer work speak and assist in a small group activity. This small group activity had state and partners putting themselves in the role of the sponsor who was trying to get started with this work. So getting them thinking about some of the things a sponsor site would need if they wanted to add local foods into the menus or conduct educational activities at their summer meal sites. 
The second part of the activity had state agencies and partners thinking about what they would need to do in their role to support this site or sponsor who was trying to get started in Farm to Summer. The regional debriefs or even state level debriefs are an excellent way to get state agencies and partners together to, to plan and discuss how they can advance Farm to Summer activities. Another state agent activity that we strongly encourage is, was embedding Farm to Summer in annual sponsor trainings. It's a really great way to get information out to sponsors, find out work already being done in the area, and additional resources and support sponsors may need. I also want to note that having the state agencies take part in discussions at the regional debriefs also equipped them with uh, many ideas and plans to use in their annual sponsor training, so one really supported the other. Lastly, throughout the year, as any new resources, best practices, model programs we learned of, we will share these with state agencies and encourage them to share among our, uh, their sponsors as well, whether it's via their website, email blasts, kickoff events, or even hard copies. By keeping our states in the loop, we hope that they will in turn model the same with their sponsors. We've also developed a few resources in this region that we hoped would assist state agencies in their annual summer meals planning. The first was an addendum to the annual management and administrative plan, better known as the MAP. The MAP is a program requirement due every year on February 15th, but also an opportunity to ensure that state agencies have a written plan for operating and improving the summer meals program. Last year, we added a local foods and educational activities section to this addendum to encourage Farm to Summer as part of their normal summer planning. Again, the idea was to embed Farm to Summer into everything summer meals, make it the norm and part of the culture. The second example of a resource we developed was a Farm to Summer survey that states could administer to sponsors. The survey was designed for state agencies who were looking to collect baseline data on current activity and interest level to better develop resources, training, et cetera, um, based on the survey responses. I'm very proud to say that the Northeast states have responded and adopted Farm to Summer into their summer meals work. Some 2016 highlights were all seven states included Farm to Summer in their annual sponsor training. All seven states included Farm to Summer activities in their annual MAP addendum that I just showed on the previous slide. Three states utilize and administer the sponsor survey that I showed you on the last slide. One state provided state level funding for sponsors who were seeking to add nutrition education activities to their site. Two regional farm to school conferences highlighted farm to summer via presentations and resource tables. And one kickoff event also highlighted farm to summer, again, with presentation and resource um, tables. I also wanted to take time to quickly highlight some of the great work on farm to summer we have seen in our region locally. There is some, this is just a small sample of some of the successful and innovative programming across the region. Last year in Vermont, an organization called Vermont Seed embarked upon a mission to extend its robust farm to school training, coordination, and professional development services beyond the school year. The Farm to School 12 Months of the Year project provided local procurement training and guidance for summer sponsors, piloted summer meal sites over the weekend at two farmers markets, and ran food and nutrition related activities at 10 summer sites. A lot of success with this project up in Vermont. The Massachusetts Farm to School Project piloted summer meal sites at farmers markets in five different communities across Massachusetts. One of those sites was able to add local fruits and vegetables to their menus from market producers and serve kids on Saturdays. Again, it was a hugely successful um, pilot program. Lastly, in Connecticut, 15 Food Corps and 10 AmeriCorps service members were trained and supported by the University of Connecticut Extension and Hunger Connecticut and Food Corps Connecticut to run farm to summer activities at summer meal sites throughout the state. I visited a site at an elementary school in East Hartford where local blueberry smoothies were served by Food Corps and AmeriCorps members who also then conducted nutrition education activities on site and it was, it was really a big hit among the kids. And as I just alluded to, one of the most important aspects, I believe, of my role at the regional office is getting out and making local connections. Visiting sites and sponsors 
conducting farm to summer activities, attending kickoff events, sponsor trainings, regional conferences. It's vital to show support and encourage farm to summer. It is the favorite part of this work for me. Making local connections, building relationships, establish partnerships, and creates buzz around farm to summer. This picture is a site visit that myself and our regional farm to school lead took part in in Connecticut last summer. Getting to local events allows me to get a pulse on what's going on and identify model programs and learn of the successes of Farm to Summer. On the screen is a USD blog that I co-authored that highlighted some of the great work in our region. I see one of my roles is getting the word out and sharing some of the really innovative practices going on in the Northeast. In closing, I always use a quote in all my presentations from our former National Farm to School Director of the USDA, Deborah Kane. She said her vision was that every child everywhere in every program has daily access to local, regional, delicious products. That is the mission that we should strive for, not just in the Northeast, but everywhere. So moving forward in 2017 and beyond, it's full steam ahead for us, and summer meals will continue to go local in the Northeast. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity today, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Katina. That was excellent. It's so good to hear what you're doing on the regional level. Great presentation, Katina. So we have a question come in about the annual training, and what were some of the topics that were discussed at that training? Our annual regional debrief training? Yes. Um, well, in addition to Farm to Summer, we have a whole, uh, whole host of topics that are community partnerships, expanding community awareness, community outreach. But within regards to Farm to Summer, um, you know, we always do a really brief intro and discussion on what is Farm to Summer. We have the states um, go around and share any best practices, any of the activities they've done this year, any of the challenges they have done. Um, like, if, for example, this year we brought in a local um, partner who had conducted farm to, school, farm to Summer work this year and had received a grant to do Farm to Summer work, so she presented on her work. And again, also this year we did a, a little bit of an activity to get folks thinking about what they might need to do in their role as a state agency or partner to advance this work. So it sort of depends um, on each year. We try to build upon it each year and expand, um, expand the topics each year. Excellent. Now, would you be able to share with us the sponsor survey you featured in your presentation? Absolutely. Okay, so Katina, if you can send that to me, um, we can send it out with the slide deck if that works for everybody. To take a look at that sponsor survey that uh, Katina in the Northeast Regional Office sent out. Great. Thank you, Katina. Uh, next up, we have Diana Floyd from the Kansas State Department of Education. Thank you. As I'm um, going to talk about the Kansas story of Summer Farm to Plate. Um, farm to Plate in Kansas is what we've lumped our programs together to focus on locally sourced food products and create a synergy against all our child nutrition programs. In Kansas, the fruit and veggie growing seasons primarily April through October. When emphasis is placed on the entire my plate, the vision is expanded to include the dairy, meats, and grains available year-round. Our story begins several years back with persistent efforts to grow the summer food service program. As this slide outlines, each year more ground is gained in reaching Kansans with summer meals. Summer meals and farm to plate make an easy connection to serve up summer fresh, flavorful meals. That it, it, it introduces the staff, the participants, and their families to the local foods concept that they may not be familiar with, and it demonstrates the great taste readily available to the participants and the, that they're worth any extra prep that might be needed. But it also helps the next door neighbor or the farmer's market up the street by expanding their customer base. Today we'll talk about four chapters or strategies of the Kansas Farm to Summer Story. First, creating excitement with events. 
Secondly, collaborate with partners sharing information and resources. Third, provide training and networking opportunities. And fourth, sharing success stories throughout the state. Special events create excitement. Kickoff events introduce summer meals to communities and farm to plates a great theme to use. Sponsors have the opportunity to make it any kind of event they wish. The goal of a kickoff event is to get parents, children, and the community excited about the summer meal program. Events can be as simple as inviting parents for a day of fun to, or to jumpstart their summer meal service program, or a major event with public officials, celebrities, and the media. One Kansas example was a partnership between the Salina School District and the Salina United Way Touch a Tractor event. It was held last summer on June 2nd at, at a site in Salina. Special guests included Dr. Katie Wilson, Deputy Undersecretary of the USDA Food Nutrition Services, and Jane Brand, USDA Mountain Plains Regional Office Division Director, the Mayor of Salina, other state government officials too. Local antique tractor clubs and local implement dealerships displayed tractors of all sizes for participants to climb on and learn about firsthand. Keeping the community engaged and coming back to sites week after week is essential to summer success. Spike events, such as Lunch Across Kansas Week, is held in July when the participation sometimes decreases. Guest speakers, cooking demonstration, bounce house, comic book, and staff dressed up as fruits and veggies have all been used to help make sure everyone knows the summer food service program is available. These special events featuring, featuring new farm fresh foods on the menu will help spark a, a interest and re-engage the community. Partner engagement is the key for any of these ex successful events. This slide lists partners in the Kansas story of summer farm to plate. By partnering with community groups, we can make the event the hub for sharing information about services that are available in the community. Consider um, in, ha, teaming up with local organizations such as area food banks, WIC clinics, schools, libraries, hospitals, community health centers, fire and the police departments, radio and television stations, military support and youth service groups like Boys and Girls Clubs, 4-H clubs, even utility companies, museums, municipal parks and pools, Red Cross and United Way chapters. Helping the participants gain uh, an understanding of how the, the participants can gain access to healthy foods and local foods as well as educational opportunities such as the school gardens, cooking lessons, and farm field trips are all made possible through these partnerships. To encourage sites to cook with seasonal produce as much as possible, the Kansas Department of Agriculture offers a regional crop calendar for fruits and vegetables as a helpful resource. Local extension offices make connections to local producers and have resources to promote agriculture in the regional areas. These partners are prominent players in our next chapter or strategy, training and networking opportunities. Kansas Appleseed, in collaboration with the Kansas Department of Education, hosted a statewide Summer Food Service Program Summit in November 2016 with 78 leaders representing 33 counties and 41 Kansas cities across the state. Leaders aligned with local government, education, health organizations, nonprofit social service organizations, and faith communities all learned about childhood hunger and discussed actionable solutions to obstacles limiting access to summer meals for Kansas children. Four regional summer summits were also held across the state for the summer meal sponsors and coordinators. This networking continues with the Team Up for Summer Food Service Program Success, a workshop to be held in March in Wichita. This workshop will provide customized technical assistance and sessions highlighting best practices. Team Up participants will develop personalized goals, strategies, and an action plan to assist with the administration of the Summer Food Service Program. 
Information is presented to the sponsors to explain and assist with farm-to-plate implementation. These training topics will include the background and definition of local, approaches to local, purchasing guide, and then how to promote local foods. A page on the KSDE website provides additional easy access to information. Key links on the left-hand side of the website provide an index to a variety of helpful resources, such as the Farm to School Toolkit, and key links to local producers, Kansas partners, guidelines, and USDA resources. Let's take a closer look at one of the resources listed on the website, the Farm to School Toolkit. It provides resources and information to develop, maintain, and support farm to plate, and whether it's in the school, preschool, child care, and in summer programs. And on your page, you can see some of the topics the toolkit contains. Looking a little closer at one, one of those is the, the top 10 tips for success. It gives specific guidance to enhance programs with fresh local foods. For example, tip number eight is shown on this page, shows how to span the meal tray with local products. Um, the dairy group using the low-fat milk, the grains, sourcing local grains from um, local meal, mills and um, through current vendors, fruits and vegetables from the farmer's market, and proteins either from current vendors or from local USDA inspected lockers. The sponsors are encouraged to simply mark the menu in some way that indicates when items are sourced locally. The Healthy Kansas Plate poster shown on the screen is available free from our department, the KSDE and Child Nutrition Wellness. It's a bright, colorful poster that can not only show participants what the menu of the day is, but also offers, offers opportunities for nutrition education by showing which food groups each menu item fall into. In addition, it can provide a space to indicate local offerings. In this example on the screen, we simply used an asterisk to indicate the local items. To help locate sources of Kansas products, food and farm councils are emerging across the state. Sponsors are linked with others who share their interest in the accessibility of fresh local foods by sharing where these food and farm councils are located. Guidelines for purchases from any of the following sources can be found on our website under the Farm to School page guide, under Guidance. There's, there they'll find a vendor letter, informal bid letter, a receipt form as well. The receipt, of course, should include the date of purchase, name of vendor or farmer, item cost, amount, and total cost. In the summer tr food service training, Farm to Summer programs are reminded that the food service account can be used to purchase items for gardens and that they can ask their current vendors. They may be using local foods already and not yet know it. Also remind them that they can purchase local foods direct from farmers or it could be a farmer's market Local grocers sometimes offer these, and then community-supported agriculture programs and school or community gardens. And then remind them that they can connect local producers, connect with local producers through the state-level cooperative extension services needed. Each state-level cooperative extension service provides an established network to help reach producers. Their websites list contact information for agents within the state. These agents and the offices have contact with the area producers who may be willing to work with the summer food service program. A list of the availability guide for Kansas-grown seasonal products is at the extension buying guide resource link shown on your screen. Also from the Land of Kansas Products, uh, th that link is listed on the Buy Sell Portal on the um, Department of Agriculture website. Use any of these resources. Will help using them will help span the meal tray from w using dairy, fruits, vegetable grains, and proteins. The next strategy 
encourages summer sponsors to share their summer story, their summer farm to plate story, by using descriptive words on the menu, inviting and involving parents on activities or on a field trip, posting photos of the local foods served on their social media, um, on their Facebook page or on their website, and then promote or feature an article in the newsletter or in the local media. This creates excitement, again, not only about the fresh foods, but reminds them about the availability of the summer meals, reminds the community of the availability. One example of the Kansas story that was featured in our um, agency's Sunflower Spotlight demonstrates how all these um, stories come together, all these chapters come together and can create an event and a, um, an experience for children. Um, one of the uh, um, communities, the Community Health Ministry in Wamego, they average about 113 summer lunches per day and had expanded largely due to the 45 Boys and Girls Club participants that walk to the site each day. The site's staffed by community volunteers and employees from the local school district. But the FFA program advisor donated locally raised sweet corn to the program. The kids and adults enjoyed the corn with actually for two meals. The sweet corn was a delicious way to add to the locally purchased pork that was a, made up of a pulled pork sandwich. And then they had cucumbers grown in the Wamigo Community Garden. The um, nutrition employee who discussed the task of providing the fresh corn with enthusiasm, said the sweet corn's always a hit with the kids. It takes extra effort to provide the fresh corn on the cob, but it's worth their excitement when they see it for lunch, knowing I can make our day by serving locally grown sweet corn. It fills my heart. Summer meals and snacks provide an opportunity to build upon healthy local choices year-round. The local foods can be more readily available from farmers markets, grocers, and local producers in the summer, and connecting those producers with these programs will help give participants insight into where their food comes from during the peak of the growing season. Summer sponsors are encouraged to use any and all of these resources to bring local foods to the table. Kansas kids love local foods. Um, do you have any questions for me? That concludes my portion. Wow, Diana, that's a lot going on in Kansas. Thank you so much for sharing. Janelle, question come through? Yes, we have a question for you, Diana. So it seems like from the state agency you have a lot of resources to offer, such as toolkits, printed materials, and workshops. How do you get sponsor feedback on what kind of resources are most helpful to them? I think the one-on-one um, -on -one working with the groups, the different um, consultants who go out and do the site visits, working with the groups, as well as they also have conference calls um, occasionally that um, with the consultants. And so that's, they get feedback that way. The, um, but the primary place they get the feedback is on the um, regional summits and then the workshops coming up this um, in Wichita in March. The workshop, too, will be another place where they have needs or questions. They'll be able to find out what other areas they need help in. Great. I, I guess we can't emphasize enough the importance of that constant communication between the sites, the sponsors, and the sponsors, the consultants, and the state agency on really ensuring that the resources that we're developing, the states and, and regional offices are developing, are pertinent to the needs of the sponsors themselves. Diana, thank you so much. It was great hearing from you. And next, we're going to move on to Tiffany from Florida. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as, as she said, my name is Tiffany Voss, and I am the Outreach Director for the Division of Food, Nutrition, and Wellness for the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. 
Florida is unique, and I'm really, really glad to be here and have the, our child nutrition programs housed in the Department of Agriculture. Our commissioner, who is an elected cabinet official, has made Farm to School a priority in the state of Florida, which has helped us really put the resources in Florida um, to make this program work. Florida is fortunate to have crops in season year-round, with our peak season for most of our produce coinciding with the school year calendar, but that makes it challenging for summer. Although fewer commodities are available in the summer months in Florida, the department continues to focus on ensuring that Florida's children have access to and learn about fresh Florida products throughout the year. Our Summer Break Spot program, which includes Seamless Summer Option and the Summer Feeding Program, is our opportunity to continue our agriculture education throughout the year. So today I would like to share with you some of the highlights of what our department is doing to encourage our Summer Break Spot sponsors to provide fresh Florida products to the children they serve. Of course, we always want to encourage our sponsors to buy local when they can. And Florida defines local as grown in Florida or um, produced in Florida. So first we'll talk about our procurement strategies. Florida is, um, for our summer break spot programs, we are taking a member of our procurement team for our child nutrition programs across the state. In fact, they are in Miami today um, talking about um, our farm to school language in contracts. So of course we're encouraging our school districts to get farm to school language in all of their school year contracts, but also carrying that language over throughout the summer. Additionally, we have staff who work with farmers throughout the year to help um, facilitate opportunity buys from the school districts um, during the school year and local farmers. Um, we're working with our division of marketing to make those contacts not only directly with the farmers but through our associations as well. So we can plan to continue that through the summer. Um, these partnerships have really allowed us to expand the networks and get the growers talking to um, the schools and our summer sponsor sites directly. So we send out a weekly newsletter throughout the school year and throughout the summer for our summer break spot sponsors, and this includes information about opportunity buys. Similar to Kansas, we um, also lead statewide promotional efforts for our summer break spot program and do events. We call them spike events in Florida. In addition to the spike events, we are working with an advertising agency um, for statewide media purchases purchases that include digital advertising, television, radio ads, and direct mail. And as a part of those statewide marketing efforts, we're working with various sponsors to host spike events throughout the summer. Last year, two of our spike events were centered around Florida products that are available in the summer. The first one you'll see here, um, we partnered with Orange County Schools and the Florida Watermelon Association to host a spike event at the beginning of the summer. Fresh from Florida watermelon slices were served as a part of the lunchtime meal and participants were also able to take part in contests and games centered around watermelon, and they also got to meet the watermelon queen. The department partnered with Pasco County Schools and Brooks Tropical to host the Tropical Takeover at Zephyr Park at a summer break spot site, summer break spot site in July. Fresh from Florida starfruit samples were handed out to all attendees and were provided by Brooks Tropical. The department worked with Brooks Tropicals to get the products donated and served as a sampling of a product that many students had not tried before. And the kids loved it. And Pasco County Schools saw an 82% increase in, participate, in participants at their summer break spot sites last summer. So we are, um, this year we are looking to host four regional spike events throughout the summer. We are already working with our Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Association here in Florida to find farmers that may be willing to donate or sell product at a reduced price to participants. Additionally, during our regional trainings, I'm talking about outreach and how we can conduct a spike event encouraging our, our sponsors to do so. Um, again, in Florida, we have limited products available in the summer, so it kind of limits what we can work on. But we do have watermelon, we have avocado, a lot of other great summer fruits that we're partnering with those farms. Um, we're also encouraging our sponsors to talk to their local ISIS um, offices to see if they have any connections with farmers um, and to work with local associations as well. As the state agency, we have created a best practice recognition program called the Summer Break Spot Challenge Awards. Two of our categories focus on providing 
providing fresh Florida products to children throughout the summer. The, award, the Farm Fresh Healthy Meals Award category is for the sponsor that provided meals that not only met the meal pattern guidelines, but were creative, nutritious, and kid-friendly. Although with serving healthy meals, the winner also is encouraged to show where they provided a generous helping of fresh local Florida produce. As a bonus, we encourage sponsors to show us how they incorporated nutrition education into their meal service to make trying new foods fun for children. Additionally, our Above and Beyond Award incorporated serving fresh, healthy meals to participants as well. In 2016, Flippany, one of our nonprofit sponsors, won the Farm Fresh Healthy Meals Award. Some of the menu items included fresh spinach and tomato salad, whole grain macaroni and cheese with cauliflower puree, and a build a taco option. As you can see in the pictures, Flippany also excelled in incorporating nutrition education into their meal service. Instructors with a nutritional background went to multiple locations um, to teach classes. Their lessons included use of whole grains, building blocks which are contained in the food groups, and what does it mean to eat healthy. Lessons also centered on the menu of the day, so child participants would be able to make that connection between what they are eating and what, why it was good for them. In 2016, Pasco County Schools was the winner of this award. They serve fresh from Florida fruits and vegetables on, the, on their summer break spot menu each year. This year they were able to provide children locally sourced um, fruit juice, watermelon, blueberries, and star fruit. As previously mentioned, the star fruit was provided at a spike event that was co-hosted with the department. Samples of Florida grown star fruit were provided to children and parents along with recipes for future use. Mobile feeding buses provided children with activities related to healthy foods and nutrition education while they were on the bus eating. The Pasco County Food and Nutrition Services Department expanded their nutrition education program this year, visiting approximately half of all their break spot school sites. The, school, the subject of this year's program was the importance of breakfast and to remind children that they can receive a free breakfast daily at any of their sites. As the Outreach Director, I'm attending or teleconferencing into all of our regional trainings for our summer break spot sponsors throughout the state. In my presentation, I'm covering some of the farm to summer elements such as encouraging, um, echoing our procurement's emphasis on buying local products and utilizing their current contracts to, to buy local. I'm also encouraging them to showcase their Fresh from Florida products on social media. We've developed the hashtag FL break spot for the summer where we're not only trying to get the word out about our summer break spot um, sponsors and their sites and increase participation, but also show our Fresh from Florida products. And then obviously I'm also echoing um, to partner with local farms for events and their IFAS extension offices. Um, throughout the year, we provide farm to school educational materials on Florida products. Our Florida Harvest of the Month program is free for anyone to download um, and features Florida products throughout the year. This year, we are encouraging our summer break spot sponsors to utilize these materials. Um, and additionally, we will be reformatting some of our older materials for summer use, such as our watermelon and avocado pieces, so the summer break spot sponsors can download this material for free. And that's all I have today, so if anyone has any questions. That's great. Thank you, Tiffany. We do have a few questions for you. So Tiffany, a question came in, how do sponsors respond to the Summer Break Spot Challenge Awards? Does it motivate them or even encourage a little bit of competition? Um, I would say both. Um, just to give everybody a little background, I've only been here about four months, so I am still getting my feet wet. But I have actually judged the first round of Summer Break Spot, um, the Challenge Awards, so it is pretty exciting. We talk about it at our regional trainings. We send information throughout the summer. And then in the fall, our, um, our sponsors submit their applications. And at those trainings and, and during the summer when um, our staff is at the different sites, they talk to us a lot about how they're getting excited about submitting their application. And it, it does definitely encourage some competition. And of course, anytime you throw an award out there, people are going to try to meet those marks. That's fantastic. I have another question. Have you received any feedback from growers or producers who are working with your sponsors? And if so, what type of feedback do they have? Um, 
you know, that's a, that's a great question. Um, we, we receive feedback more, more throughout the year because obviously we don't have as many crops throughout the summer. Um, but some of the feedback that we get is that they're excited to work with schools, especially some of our local um, farmers. They just didn't know how to get in or how to break the doors down. So that's something that we're really working on promoting through our overall Farm to School initiative. Um, the growers are really open. They're really excited to interact with the kids. Um, what we found, or what I have found with the agriculture industry is that the, the farmers in our state are just so passionate about what they do and, and educating folks on what they do. So they're excited to not just not just to be selling to schools or selling to summer break spot sponsors, but to be interacting with the kids and to teach them about what they do and how they do it and how the food gets onto their plate. So it's really a win for everybody because not only are the kids getting access to the nutritious food, but they're also learning about it and understanding where it comes from. That's great, Tiffany. Thank you so much. I think we often hear um, how the schools or the summer sponsors are enjoying the local produce or the local products, but it's nice to hear that the agriculture side, the producer side of things are also equally benefiting from these initiatives and these programs. So we're going to review some of the USDA Farm to Summer resources that are available uh, for sponsors, sites, state agencies, and regional offices. But if you have questions, Janelle is still manning the chat box, so you can continue to send them in and we'll address them at the very end. We do have a USDA Farm to Summer page located underneath the Farm to School page, and there you can access a plethora of information including our fact sheets and a variety of policy memos or procurement guides that will help sponsors and state agencies and regions to promote this initiative. Hopefully everyone's familiar with the Capacity Builder, um, but if you're not, this is an excellent mapping tool that allows you to layer information to see what is occurring where. So for example, you can click on sites, look at summer sites or area eligible locations, and then you can layer that information with nearby farmers markets. If you're looking to start an edible school site or you're encouraging your sponsors to do an edible summer site, uh, you can also layer with information such as the 2015 Farm to School census information. So you can see maybe which schools in an area eligible location have a garden, and maybe that you want to connect with that school and see if the, they can operate a summer program. We also have the Farm to School grant awardees information on there, so you can see what kind of Farm to School projects have been awarded in the last few years. Incorporating local foods and Farm to Summer initiatives is also included in the toolkits and the handbooks, um, so you should have more information there. And we have some new tip sheets that have come out from our partners at Team Nutrition. This is a four-page document that has a plethora of resources and information on really how to enhance uh, meal quality in the summer meals program. They highlight uh, using local foods in the summer programs as well as provide sample menus. And even more recently, a bunch of partners came together to develop this tip sheet on utilizing food corps volunteers. We often know that the, we ask sponsors and sites to do things like taste tests or educational activities, but they might not have the manpower or the resources to actually implement those activities. Utilizing groups such as AmeriCorps, Food Corps, or local volunteer base is a great way to promote some of those educational or experiential activities that might not be of the capacity of the site or sponsor themselves. So this tip sheet will give some information on how you can connect specifically with Food Corps. And we do have Farm to Summer regional contacts in all of our regions. You heard from Katina today, but every region has a person that's dedicated to doing Farm to Summer work, in addition to the individuals who are already there doing Farm to School work and the national office staff. So please do not hesitate to contact your regional office if you're a state or if you're a region. Work with, find your regional Farm to Summer contacts or reach out to the national office we're always here to help and work with you to figure out how we can best support this program. Um, this is my email and contact information. So if you have questions about Farm to School or Farm to Summer, feel free to send me an email. And I don't think we have any other questions. 
So we want to thank all of our speakers today for sharing the wonderful resources and work that they are doing in their states and their regions, and thank all of you for supporting Farm to School, Farm to Summer, and Community Food System work throughout all of the child nutrition programs. We hope you have a great day. Thank you.